In the vastness of space, every so often, something drifts into our neighborhood that doesn't belong. For centuries, astronomers have tracked comets and asteroids bound to the sun, tracing familiar loops and arcs that confirm their place in our solar system. But sometimes, objects arrive on trajectories that tell a different story. Visitors not native to this stellar home, but travelers from the deep galaxy beyond. One of the newest and most intriguing of these wanderers is designated 3I Atlas. It is only the third confirmed interstellar object ever detected, and its discovery is already sparking new ideas about how planets may form and what role interstellar debris might play in shaping worlds like our own. NASA formally describes 3I Atlas as a comet, largely because it exhibits features typical of icy bodies, faint activity near the sun, a tail-like haze, and behavior influenced by volatile ices heating up as it approaches the inner solar system. But astrophysicist Suzanne Falsner suggests something more provocative. She argues that this object could be a planet seed, a building block capable of helping young stars form giant planets far faster than current theories allow. If true, this idea may reshape not only how we think about 3i Atlas, but how planetary systems across the galaxy are born. The object was identified by its unusual path. While comets that originate in the distant Oort cloud or Kuiper belt still follow closed elongated ellipses around the Sun, 3i Atlas entered on a hyperbolic trajectory. This means it is not bound to the Sun's gravity, and once it departs, it will never return. Despite its comet-like behavior, irregularities remain. Its activity does not fit perfectly with established patterns, and researchers hesitate to pin it down completely. Some lean toward conventional explanations. Heating near the sun can cause jets of gas that nudge such objects off course. Others keep the door open to alternative interpretations. Harvard astrophysicist Avi Loeb, for instance, famously proposed that Oumuamua might represent alien technology, though that claim remains speculative without direct evidence. For many scientists, the more compelling opportunity lies not in imagining spacecraft from other civilizations, but in asking whether interstellar objects could play a broader natural role in cosmic evolution. This connects to one of the deepest puzzles in planetary science. How did giant planets like Jupiter and Saturn form so quickly? According to the standard model, planets grow gradually through a process of accretion. Tiny dust grains in a young star's protoplanetary disk collide, stick, and build up into larger clumps. Over time, these clumps become planetesimals and eventually fully-fledged planets. But simulations reveal a fundamental barrier. Once particles reach pebble to boulder sizes, centimeters to meters, they no longer stick together easily. Instead, they bounce off or fragment upon collision. This meter-sized barrier makes it extremely difficult to grow the massive cores needed to form gas giants. Complicating matters further is time itself. The clock starts ticking the moment a star is born. Surrounding it is a protoplanetary disk, a swirling, flattened halo of gas and dust left over from stellar formation. For a while, this disk is a fertile nursery, the raw material from which planets can emerge. But it is not permanent. Observations from instruments like ALMA, the Atacama Large Millimeter Submillimeter Array, show that these disks dissipate quickly, often within less than 10 million years. Radiation from the young star coupled with stellar winds and interactions with nearby stars gradually blows away the gas, leaving behind a far thinner and less supportive environment. The result is that planet formation has only a short-lived window of opportunity, a cosmic race against time. This is a serious problem for conventional models. Building a gas giant like Jupiter or Saturn isn't just a matter of collecting a few rocks. The process requires forming a massive solid core, several times the mass of Earth, quickly enough to begin attracting a thick gaseous atmosphere before the disk vanishes. And yet, telescopes routinely find giant planets around stars that are only a few million years old, a blink of an eye in cosmic terms. 
According to theory, there simply shouldn't have been enough time for such massive worlds to assemble. How, then, did these young giants defy the odds and form so quickly? This is where Suzanne Falsner's proposal enters the picture. At a planetary science conference in Germany, she introduced a provocative twist. What if the early stages of planetary growth do not always begin with microscopic grains of dust colliding endlessly in the void? Instead, what if young star systems sometimes inherit building blocks from outside, foreign seeds delivered across the galaxy? Her idea centers on interstellar objects like 3 i Atlas. These bodies are not bound to any one star system. They form in the planetary nurseries of other stars, are flung outward by gravitational interactions, and then wander the galaxy, drifting for millions or even billions of years. Every now and then, one of these wanderers may pass close enough to a young star that it is captured into the star's protoplanetary disk. Once embedded in this rich swirl of gas and dust, it does something extraordinary. It provides a ready-made nucleus. The advantage of starting with a nucleus of kilometer scale or larger is profound. Dust grains in a disk struggle to stick to one another beyond pebble size. Collisions at those scales tend to break particles apart, creating a frustrating bottleneck in growth. But when such material encounters a large seed, the physics changes. The seed's gravity, even if weak, and its sheer surface area increase the odds of small particles adhering instead of rebounding. Growth suddenly becomes efficient. Instead of millions of years of fragile trial and error, the process leaps forward. A seed can rapidly accumulate surrounding matter, growing into a massive core capable of drawing in gas before the protoplanetary disk disappears. This mechanism may be especially crucial for gas giants. To capture and retain their thick, gaseous envelopes, they require a core of at least 10 Earth masses. Without a jump start, the gas would vanish before such a core could assemble. With a seed, however, the odds tilt in favor of success. In essence, interstellar objects act as cosmic catalysts, tipping the scales toward the rapid formation of giant worlds. Falsner's computer models add another intriguing wrinkle. They suggest that massive stars are particularly adept at capturing these wandering bodies. The stronger gravity of such stars, combined with their larger disks, makes them more efficient nets for interstellar seeds. This offers a natural explanation for a long-standing observational puzzle. Giant planets are far more common around stars larger than the Sun than they are around cooler, smaller M-dwarfs. Traditional models struggle to explain this disparity, but if interstellar seeding is real, the pattern falls neatly into place. The statistics of exoplanet populations may reflect not only local disk physics, but also the galactic traffic of these nomadic objects. Importantly, Falsner does not argue that her idea overturns existing theories. The familiar processes of pebble accretion, where centimeter-sized particles rapidly pile onto larger ones, and gravitational instability, where parts of the disk collapse under their own weight, still have roles to play. Rather, her proposal adds a new layer. Planet formation may not be a single monolithic process, but a hybrid one with multiple mechanisms operating in concert. Interstellar seeds could act as the first foothold, enabling growth to bypass the early bottlenecks, while local accretion processes finish the job. Seen from this perspective, 3i Atlas is not just an oddity, not merely a comet streaking briefly across our skies. It becomes a symbol of cosmic recycling. Sometimes, these interstellar objects merely pass through, their trajectories carrying them on forever. But sometimes, under the right circumstances, they are captured and transformed, no longer solitary wanderers, but the foundations of entirely new worlds. What once belonged to one star system can, across the eons, become part of another. If Falsner's hypothesis holds, the implications ripple outward. First, it solves the time problem in planetary science by offering a plausible way for gas giants to form within the short lifetimes of protoplanetary disks. Second, it emphasizes the interconnectedness of planetary systems. 
stars may exchange material, seeding one another with the ingredients of planets, perhaps even of life. Over billions of years, the galaxy becomes a web of shared histories, with planets bearing signatures not of isolation, but of collaboration. Our own Jupiter might carry within it the legacy of a body born around a distant star, long before Earth took shape. Finally, the hypothesis raises the importance of studying interstellar objects directly. Each one is a messenger, carrying with it the chemical fingerprints, structural clues, and dynamical histories of other systems. They are not just curiosities, but potential keys to planetary origins. By intercepting and analyzing them, we could uncover whether they truly bear the marks of planet seeds, and in doing so, understand whether the story of planetary formation is more interconnected and more galactic in scope than we ever imagined. So far, astronomers have identified only three such visitors, Amuamua, Borisov, and now Atlas. That is far too small a sample to draw strong statistical conclusions, but that will soon change. With the upcoming Vera C. Rubin Observatory in Chile, scientists expect to discover many more each year. Its advanced wide-field survey capabilities will sweep the sky for faint, fast-moving objects, dramatically expanding the catalog of interstellar visitors. With a larger data set, researchers can test whether these bodies are common and massive enough to serve as seeds on a galactic scale. Beyond observation, future missions could go one step further, interception. Concepts for spacecraft equipped with high-resolution instruments are already under discussion. Such missions could rendezvous with an interstellar object, measure its composition and structure, and perhaps even sample its material. If one of these objects truly served as a planet seed, it might bear signatures in its age, chemistry, or isotopic ratios that distinguish it from local comets. The opportunity to hold in our hands a piece of another star's planetary system would be revolutionary. Whether or not Falsner's hypothesis proves correct, its greatest contribution may be in shifting perspective. Instead of viewing interstellar objects as isolated oddities, it encourages us to see them as part of a broader galactic ecosystem, pieces of stellar histories exchanged across time and space. Planetary systems may not be closed boxes, but participants in a continuous galactic dialogue, sharing matter, momentum, and potential. For the public imagination, this idea has a special resonance. The thought that our own solar system, and perhaps Earth itself, may carry building blocks from distant stars underscores how interconnected the universe truly is. In a sense, every world could carry the legacy of many suns, stitched together from materials scattered across the galaxy. This vision challenges the notion of isolation and replaces it with a picture of cosmic collaboration, where interstellar travelers play quiet but pivotal roles in shaping planets and perhaps even life. 3i Atlas, then, is not just another comet to be cataloged and forgotten. It may represent a profound clue in one of astronomy's greatest mysteries. It invites us to look at the night sky not just as a backdrop, but as a dynamic system of exchange, where seeds of worlds drift between stars, waiting to take root. Whether this object itself once served as such a seed or whether it is destined to wander forever, it already plays a role by sparking new ideas, by pushing theories forward, and by reminding us that the cosmos is still full of mysteries waiting to be unraveled. As technology advances and our instruments grow sharper, our ability to study these visitors will expand. Each new discovery will not only deepen our understanding of planetary formation, but also of our place in the galactic community. The story of 3i Atlas is still being written, and with it, the story of how planets, perhaps even planets like our own, come to be. The hypothesis that such interstellar bodies serve as planetary seeds is not yet proven. But like the object itself, racing across our skies on a one-time visit, it leaves a trail of inspiration. The truth may lie in the data yet to come, in missions yet to launch, in observatories yet to open their shutters. Until then, we are left with the tantalizing possibility that the foundations of worlds are not bound to one star, but are shared across the galaxy, carried on the paths of wanderers like 3i Atlas.